recording now. Right. Welcome to the Mental Health Revolution podcast and today I'm talking to Dave Roger who is the health and safety manager um, at Solar Frame Holdings based in Rotherham. The reason why I wanted to talk to Dave particularly is because he's, um, well, so, uh, uh, Solar Frame as a company are quite trailblazing in the way that they are dealing with uh, mental health in the workplace. So can I just ask Dave, first and foremost, why you think mental health is such a kind of, I guess, a thorny issue uh, for workplaces and why it's probably not dealt with as freely and easily as it could be? I think one of the reasons why it, it's always the hidden subject is there's a lot of misunderstanding around it from both people that may suffer with mental health problems and also a management system that wouldn't really understand how to help. Mm -hmm. So there's this, there's, there's, it's quite a dark area um, that nobody really fully understands. And I wouldn't say people don't want to understand. They see it as being complex. Yeah. Is that because they there's a fear there or that they fear a, a certain judgment, if you like? I think there's I think there's a stigma around mental health as 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 been this like a you know as I say a stigma because it's always been perceived that people only have mental ill health mm -hmm. because we accept if somebody's having mental good health that that's the norm yeah um, and everybody has this this good mental health but you know few people have the ill health and that, I think that's where the problem lies people don't realise that it's a fluctuating. Uh, curve for everybody in life at some point in time yeah you know, we'll have the good times and we'll have the bad do you, do you find that that it's you know people bring their problems into work and then they take their problems from work back into the home and there's like a, a blending of the edges if you like isn't there yeah i think very much so nowadays everything blends into one because the way that we we, we, work, we work from home or we work mobile nowadays there's not so much of as, as a fine line between what is work and what is home life. And it's so easy to blend between the two. Do you find, um, do you find with Soda Frame, it's, um, the, 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 the mood in the office and the mood in the factory has changed? So particularly considering what we've been through over the last year of COVID, has that, has that had an impact on, on the way the company has performed? I think, yeah, there's definitely been an impact from uh, what's, what's happened over the past 12 months. Um, as, you, as, as we, we came out of lockdown as a business, we came out in May last year and we brought our staff back gradually. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of um, uncertainty about who's coming back, how long we're coming back for. And, you know, for us, fortunately, our industry's um, taken a, a rise for the good, which has been really, really positive, which meant that we've got our, um, our factory staff back 100% and we've been running like that since June. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think that period where they were off, there was a lot of uncertainty uh, with, the, with the virus, with what was happening at work, um, and, and the, just the way that things were developing. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose also for us, a lot of our guys, they, they come to work to do a job and then go home. So some of the staff have got that, that switch point where that's work and that's home. But um, we still carry a lot of that with us all, all the times. How many times do you wake up at night? And think, oh, I need to do that for work tomorrow, or I forgot to do that thing at work today. Mm -hmm. Our work life, because we spend so much of it here at work, mm -hmm. it's, it's sometimes really hard to differentiate. And I think it makes it harder now, particularly as we are in the current climate with the pandemic and with the lockdown, we don't have any release. Yeah. Because the highlight of the week is a shopping trip to Tesco's. <laughs> yeah. And if you'd have said that 12 months ago, you know, 13 months ago, that in, in 12 months' time, your highlight is going to be going to Tesco. You'd think we will all start raving lunatics. <laughs> that is for some people. You yeah. know, for me, for me at the moment, you know, getting to the weekend to go to Tesco is, is an outlet. <laughs> um, well, what I, would you What would you be doing before then? What would you normally be doing then, Dave? Um, I'd probably be doing the most unhealthy health and safety thing ever than riding my motorbike all over the roads. Uh, a bit of a tarmac terrorist is what I could consider myself at the weekend. But that's a trait of health and safety people. What we do in the week, we don't generally do at the weekend. <laughs> do you think, do you think um, that mental health 
uh, is a is, is is a health and safety issue, or do you think it's a human resources issue? I think it blurs between the two lines. Um, we know that the impact of mental ill health and it ha what it has on workers with distraction and, and, and certain feelings at low points and things mm -hmm. can have a health and safety impact on the on the business itself with regards to that person and their performance uh, and their focus on what they're meant to do, particularly when we're operating machinery. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much for the mind to wander. But mm -hmm. I think it also ties within the uh, HR side, the human resources side, uh, mm -hmm. where we've got, you know, good foundations of talking to people, listening to people, understanding people. I think HR for me has always been a bit more of a woolly cuddly mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. whereas health and safety for me, most things are black and white, we do and we don't. Um, but I think it sits nicely between both, um, which is really good for us as a business. When you're talking um, like within, you know, the, the guys and the girls that you work with um, in, in Rotherham, you've got what, 100, 100 plus employees at the moment? Well, 120. You've got 120, so that's, that, that's gone up quite significantly, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> do you what's do you find that people are, are open? Uh, are they open to talking about it with you? Um, are they quite reticent, or is there a real mixture? And um, when they do talk candidly, does it kind of precipitate um, other people coming forward as well? Yeah, I think I think. Like everybody else, there's still there's still a stigma of people speaking out in front of other people, particularly if they've got issues. But what I've found is, and, and I think what what what's helped us over the past is we, the daily checking that we do. Mm -hmm. um, so as you know, we have our team leaders that check in with every member of staff on a daily basis. So I've been taking over some of that and opening up conversations. And some people are really happy to talk if they're having a bit of a bad day. Some people won't talk at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people would be happy to talk if you take them on a one-to-one -one and come and have a chat you know it it, it varies but for, for us as a business the daily check-in has been an absolutely really really positive move mm -hmm. uh, opening up an engagement whereas before regardless of any of any kind of um, mental issues mental health issues at all it was always a, well it's not really the business's responsibility it's not really for the business to look at Mm. But we're now taking responsibility of looking after and working with the staff, whether it whether it's inside or outside of the workplace, and that check-in has been really, really brilliant. Just to talk to people, just to engage with people, and say, Do you know what, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay if you're having a crap day. That's fine mm -hmm. because at some point today's going to finish, and we can start again tomorrow, yeah. and we can build on, keep building on the positives. Mm -hmm. That's and we great. have certain things that will happen around our check-ins. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we love Chippy Friday. Mm -hmm. And that percents are really good. Oh, oh what, Friday? <laughs> Chippy Friday. Chippy Friday, yeah. <laughs> Chippy Friday. Uh, you know, and there's, there's all sorts of things that, that make people think better and more positive. And Monday Monday's normally our uh, back-to-work day. And that's that's really starting to pick up as well, getting really good percentage on a Monday. Yeah. It's it's interesting, isn't it? Because it takes it takes a while for these things to kick in and to to become part of the routine, if you like. Um, and and I think like with good any good emotional well being habit, that is a it, it's 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 a habit that takes a while to and you've got to put the effort into it. It is every every one of, every every member of the team has gone round religiously day in day out, regardless of when we first started and the percent we were getting and and talking to people. And I think the teams learnt quite a lot as well. Mm. Has been really positive, and the staff now expect it. If yeah, we've not been around and we've not checked in. It's like, where were you yesterday? That's the uh, so, so. There's a reliance re re from the staff that, that you know we're talking, mm -hmm. that we're open, that we're listening. Yeah, and we don't have all the answers for them all the time, and we don't have every answer, but mm -hmm. somebody's listening. Yeah, um, and each member of the team is putting extreme efforts to get us to that point. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that, that you personally, that you're learning and that you're um, becoming stronger as a result? Have you had ish, have you struggled in the past yourself? Yeah, personally, I, yeah. Like most people, I have had major ups and downs within my life um, and struggling to cope with some day-to-day -day tasks, uh, particularly recently when my um, marriage broke up um, and, it, and it was a really, really bit of a dark path for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 like everybody else, initially, it's where do you reach out to? Mm -hmm. You've got this this big, big, 
the darkness around you. Um, and it doesn't matter how many people tell you, come and talk to me. It, you, you, you have to find your, your way out. Um, and it's being able to reach out to people. It's being able to sit and talk to people. And I've, what I've found, particularly in the role that we've been doing at Solar Faith, is just having somebody that you can talk to. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just talking rubbish, for a lot of people, that's the way out. And I know for myself, when I was struggling with my mental health at the time, that it wasn't a case of taking medication. I needed to speak to somebody. And I just needed somebody not to agree with me, not to disagree with me, but just listen to what I was saying. Mm -hmm. And I, I was fortunate I managed to find myself onto a, on a counselling session of six weeks, which at the end of the six weeks, my problems were there. Mm -hmm. I hadn't gone away, but I was looking at it to completely different, which is, I, I think, one of the things that I bring to my role is the fact that we have to think out of the box. We have to think different ways around it. And I think empowering people to, to reach out or to look at different ways or to, to research things is really, really good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And you've, um, yeah, that, that's really, <laughs> that's really interesting, isn't it? Because I, I think that um, one of the reasons why people get so afraid around mental health is because, as you say, you know, it's that that diagnostic medical type approach, which kind of shuts everything down. Um, and you're always looking for a cure. But actually, it's it's not the cure that you're after. You're just looking for a way of actually dealing with it as opposed to curing issues you're never going to find a cure because once you've gone through one period of, of of struggle you know and then you and then you come out of it you go into another one so the whole point is that you need to be uh looking for ways to strengthen and find that resilience so that next time you're in that hole you can actually uh you're you are more adept at, at coming out of it if you like yeah, I think one of the things that you do when you when you when you teaching and you're learning and your mind's picking up new things is you you build yourself an armor, mm -hmm. and you build yourself an armor that gives you the strength to look for other things, to look for other ways, yeah, um, to, to, and to and to find other ways to deal with it. I think one of the things with particularly with mental ill health, we think we can go to the doctor and we can have a drug, and it's dealt with. Yeah, it may help those mental imbalances as, as we know now. But the root problem is still going to be there at the end of it. Yeah, um, and, that, and, and actually those imbalances have been um, discredited. That's actually a, a myth that's been perpetrated. Um, that there is actually no 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 imbalance any, any more than there would be, you know, in 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 any you know normal day. So um, so actually you're not treating anything. You're you're actually just perpetuating the problem, if you like, by yeah. feeding it with uh, with synthetics. Right? Yeah, I think that's what, but that's one of the key parts of the. That we, you know, we seem to have this reliance on we'll go to the doctors and we'll get some, mm. get some drugs, and then if we doesn't get us, some would seem to be disappointed. Mm. On the on the occasion that I approached my doctor initially, and said I was you know feeling a bit down, having a bit of a hard time, mm. he said, well, there's some resources that you can use here, but let's 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 see what we can do, but let's come back in mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. Which I now know is called what's for waiting. <laughs> but a lot of people at the time initially perceive that as you don't want to know, you're not interested, kind yeah. of thing. But mm -hmm. it was the right thing to do. Yeah. It was the it was the bit that helped me understand that there are, there are other ways. Yeah. To mm -hmm. get to the resources and to get to the help that I needed at the time, mm -hmm. and then learn to cope. And we, you know, the can do things that we've been doing at work. Yeah. And the lessons and all of those things. Just reinforce everything that yeah. that, you've, that we've done that I've personally done as well. So it's uh, it's really really nice to think. Do you know what we got it right in the end? Yeah, absolutely. And it's just it's a question of having to give people the time and space to discover that for themselves. I think as well. Yeah, I think I think if you give people the right time and the and the right support mm -hmm. uh, and the, the potential to listen, mm -hmm. you'll get a lot further. You get a lot further with. Uh, health issues, mental health issues than yeah. you will with anything else. I think people don't always realise that, you know, these feelings, they come, these feelings go. Mm -hmm. um, particularly in the uh, young male area at the moment, we know that there's a stigma around and there's quite a high lot of suicide in that area. And there's a lot of work that's being done in that area. And I think an understanding is is really key. Yeah. What everybody's trying to achieve. And I think we, we have to reach out to people and, Solar frame, we've got a really good way of reaching out. Um, mm -hmm. 
the touching base with everybody every day um, yeah is really really been good yeah and just by being aware of that as well it just makes you that much more sensitive as well and 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 um yeah, sensitive to the moods and the fluctuations around you on a day-to-day -day basis yeah you, you you can see your friends and the people that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis you can see when people are having a good day you can see when people are having a bad day i'm really fortunate because i don't know all of my 120 people mm. for a full day mm. i probably get to speak to them probably five minutes in a week yeah. um, and, and from that has been a really really big learning curve for myself mm -hmm. uh, and i can see when i go into an office you know if somebody's not in the normal headspace uh you, you can reach out mm -hmm. you don't need to do it as a big you know stand up in front of everybody or just a quiet word just a quick email to somebody how you're feeling everything okay yeah. Let them know if you need me i'm here and it, it is really that reassurance that people sometimes need that's brilliant. Dave, you've become the poster boy of the can-do attitude. <laughs> That's absolutely fabulous. Listen, Dave, thank you so much for talking to me. Um, I think it's brilliant what you're doing and, uh, and I really appreciate everything that you're doing as well. And I look forward to um, working with you over the coming weeks and months. No problem. Thanks, Kate. Take care. Uh -huh.